Hi everybody, welcome back to Marie's Kitchen. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are making key lime pie. And if you watched my video last week on coconut cream pie, I have good news for you. This one is equally delicious, but even easier. And unlike most recipes for key lime pie, this one has no eggs, and I do have a reduced sugar option. With a pale green filling and a big cloud of whipped cream on top, this pie is delicious and beautiful. And I can say as a fact, it is restaurant worthy. My mom first tried this pie back in the 1980s at a restaurant in Austin and she loved it so much, she came home and recreated it. And now I know she would be so thrilled that all of you are gonna get to enjoy it. So do let me know how you like it. I can't wait to hear from you. Let's get started. All right, first step, we're gonna make a homemade all butter pie crust in the food processor. And this is a great one to make ahead. You can wrap it up and keep it in the refrigerator for two or three days, or you can keep it in the freezer for two or three months. First, we'll need one and a quarter cup all-purpose flour. And this does measure to 170 grams of flour. Then we'll add one quarter teaspoon kosher salt and one tablespoon sugar. I'm gonna make this crust pretty quickly, but if you'd like a full tutorial, head over to my easy pie crust tutorial. There I show you how to make a pie crust in the food processor, in the KitchenAid stand mixer, or in a bowl with your hands or with a pastry cutter. My favorite way is to make it in the food processor, so that's what we're doing today. But if you don't have one or are interested in other ways, check out my easy pie crust tutorial. Now we'll give this a quick pulse. That just mixes up our dry ingredients. Now we need butter, and I keep the butter in the refrigerator until it's time to use it. It's one stick, which is one half cup, or 113 grams, and it's unsalted butter. I'm gonna grab that from the fridge now. A lot of people ask why I use unsalted butter and then add salt, and the reason is, first of all, habit. I've just always made the pie crust this way. This is how my mom taught me, so that's just what I do, but also the amount of salt in salted butter can vary by brand. So you never know exactly how much salt you're getting. So just to be more consistent, you can use unsalted butter and add the one quarter teaspoon salt. But if all you have is salted butter, that will definitely work, just leave out the salt. Now I've cut this into about eight tablespoons. You can see it's very cold. You always wanna use cold butter because you want that butter to stay in little pieces in the crust. The whole key to pie crust is having those little pieces of butter in there because when they melt, they release steam, which creates a little pocket of air and that's what creates flakes. So keep the butter cold and pop it into the food processor here. Now we'll pulse this about five times just to start to cut in the butter. And again, if you're not using a food processor, the same process, you're just starting to cut into the butter, cut it into a little smaller pieces. There we go, and you can see, careful the blades in there, but you can see there are still some really big chunks of butter in there, and that is perfectly fine. Now we'll add cold water. A lot of people do put ice in the water to keep it ice cold. And again, the reason is to keep the butter cold. If we keep the butter cold, you'll get the flakes. So cold water, and we're gonna use five tablespoons or 75 grams. One, two, three, four, five. Now we'll pulse this again. Looks good. There are some big pieces of butter and small pieces of butter. So we'll just pop that off. Now we'll put down a big piece of Glad Press and Seal, which is one of my favorite kitchen supplies. It's like a cling wrap, but it's a little easier to work with. So I always have a roll in my drawer. And now what we'll do is just pull the blade out. Got a little stack there. Okay. Okay. And then 
we'll take our pie crust and just dump it right onto the press and seal like that. Now, while this does look pretty dry, you may be wondering how is that gonna turn into a pie crust? If you squeeze it together, it holds together like a pie crust. So, you know we're in good shape. Now we'll pull this together here. The corners, pull those together and wrap it into a disc. And then you twist it closed. Use your hands to shape it into a disc. And there is the pie crust. Now we'll put this in the fridge for at least 20 minutes. One or two hours is even better. The goal is to let the gluten rest, let the butter get a little colder, and also let the water hydrate the flour. So at least 20 minutes and two hours or two days is also fine. All right, now for the filling. The first thing we need is one tablespoon lime zest. I have a microplane grater here and you just kind of rub the lime on there, just the green part. The white part is the pith and it can be very bitter. So you just rub a little bit just to get the green part. And I can put a link in the description box if you'd like to get a microplane grater. We'll do one more. So that's about one tablespoon lime zest or two grams. And then we'll take these same limes and we're gonna juice them because we'll need one third cup fresh lime juice. If you find fresh lime juice at your grocery store, you can certainly use that and save time, but you don't wanna use anything that's shelf stable. Those are not gonna taste as good as the fresh. Now we'll grab a medium pot and we're gonna add three tablespoons cornstarch. Now to that, we're gonna add one cup heavy whipping cream. Cornstarch can get really lumpy, so whenever I'm using it, I like to make sure that it's fully combined with a little bit of liquid before we add anything else. So I'm just gonna whisk this together until there are no more lumps. All right, this looks good, nice and smooth. Next, we'll add one cup sugar. And you could use a sugar substitute. One thing I've been using lately is the Stevia cane sugar substitute. And it's a one for one substitute, so you would just use one cup of that in place of one cup sugar. I haven't tried this recipe with a completely sugar-free version, but I do plan to, so stay tuned for that. Now we'll whisk this in and we wanna get it nice and smooth as well. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna give the sides a wipe here just to make sure we got everything mixed in. No lumps. Now we'll add one third cup fresh lime juice. Mix that right in. And our lime zest, all in one pot. I love that. We'll just give that a stir and we'll head over to the stove. We'll set the stove to about medium high and we're gonna bring this to a boil. You have to bring it to a boil in order to activate the cornstarch and make it thicken your liquid. So we'll just whisk this while it's heating up. Now we're also gonna add one quarter cup unsalted butter and that's 57 grams. So we'll just toss that in and that's gonna melt right with the other ingredients and we'll just swirl it in as we whisk it. So that butter is melting. And it actually gets a little thinner before it gets thick. So don't worry if it seems to be getting thinner. When it comes to a boil, that's when it'll start thickening. 
Okay, we can see some bubbles there on the side, starting to bubble around the outside, so we know it's coming to a boil. You can see it's getting nice and thick now. So we'll let that boil about one minute, stirring frequently so you make sure you don't burn anything. See how thick that's getting? It's great. And now we'll reduce the heat to medium low and we're gonna let it simmer, which is just below boiling. If you see simmer in a recipe, sometimes it's like, what does that even mean? Um, sometimes it says a heavy simmer, or a low simmer. Basically it means just below boil. So I move it to about medium low and cook that for about five more minutes. Mmm, smells so good. Yum. All right, now the filling is nice and thick, so I'll let it cool to about room temp. And it's been about 20 minutes, so I think it is time to roll out our pie crust. And I do have my little bowl of flour over here to put on the counter, and then also a little on the rolling pin, a little on your hands if you need it. And what I like to do first is just press out the crust with my hands like this. You don't knead it or uh, work the dough in any way. You don't ever want to do that because that's going to create more gluten or activate more gluten. Instead, I'm just pressing and just doing a little bit of the rolling for me. I'm doing that with my hands instead of with the rolling pin. So we just have a little bit bigger disc here that is just a little easier to work with. Now when we roll out the pie crust, we're going to roll and then turn it a quarter turn. And we do that for two reasons. The first reason is, is to prevent it from sticking. If you turn it every time, it's not gonna get stuck in one place. Or if it does start to stick in one area, you'll know it real quick. You can slide some flour underneath it and fix it. The other benefit of rolling it a quarter turn after every roll is that it helps you keep the pie crust in this nice round shape. And this will fit better in your pie plate. So roll and turn. I'll do a little more flour underneath. Roll and turn. And I don't know if you can see close up, but we have got some big pieces of butter in there. That looks so good. We know this is gonna be a nice flaky crust. Roll and turn, maybe a little flour on here again. If it feels sticky, just add a little flour. Now, if you happen to have a dry spot, I don't really have any in this crust, maybe on this edge. What you can do if you see a dry spot is just take a little bit of water with your finger and just dab it there, tiny, tiny bit. Just dab it on there, on little, the little dry spots just with your finger, like finger painting. Not too much, because you don't want a real sticky crust, but we're just gonna hydrate that dry spot. There we go. Okay, looks good, and we'll keep rolling. buttery part over here. All right, this looks good. Now, what you'll do is take your pie plate. Actually, let me give it a little more roll up here. It feels like it was stretching back. Okay, there is our pie crust. Now we'll take our pie plate, and I like to use a very simple nine inch Pyrex pie plate. They work really well. Also, another thing I like about this plate is it has this lip here, and I'll show you when we fold the edge, it's gonna rest on that lip. So if you get a pie plate with a lip, instead of just the wavy edge, um, this works a lot better. 
And I can put a link in the description box if you'd like to get one of these, they're real affordable. Now to measure to see if the crust is big enough, I just flip my pie plate right on top of the crust like that. And you wanna have about two inches all the way around. And that'll give you a nice thick edge. So now we'll just fold the crust in half, move it up out of the way, bring in our pie plate, place the crust right in the middle of the pie plate, and then unfold it. And there you have your pie crust, homemade pie crust in the pie plate. Now we'll just kind of set it in. You don't wanna stretch it in any way, you just kind of set it in there. Now it's time to make the edge. For the edge, I don't cut off this extra here. I like to have a really thick edge so I don't cut off any of the crust. If you come to a patch where there's just a ton of real bulky piece of crust, you can pinch that off. But in general, I like to use it all up. So what we're gonna do is just take our pie crust here and fold it under itself and then rest it on the lip if your pie plate has one. So fold it under itself and rest it on the lip. This feels kind of big and bulky right here, so I might pinch a little bit off like that, and that'll fit under a little better. There we go. Hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing there. This one feels a little thick here too, so I'm gonna pinch off a little there. And then keep folding it under, resting it on the lip. It's so nice to hear from so many of you who have tried this recipe and tried this method and have had some great success. So many of you had said, I'd. Never made a pie crust until I tried this recipe and I did it and it was so easy and so good. So I love hearing from you, it means so much. Thank you for leaving comments and sending emails. I do read all of them myself and try to respond to everything, although I am getting a little behind. <laughs> all right, there is our pie crust. Looks good. Really pretty there in the plate. You can still see all those butter pieces in there. If you have some really big butter pieces on the edge, that butter's gonna melt and there's not gonna be enough flour to absorb it. And so what's likely to happen is the butter will drain down into your oven or onto your parchment lined baking sheet. So I always bake my pie crust on parchment lined baking sheet for this reason. Now what you can also do is dab a little flour on top of it in the hopes that maybe there'll be a little more flour to absorb some of that butter and it won't just turn to a puddle. A little flour on that butter, okay. Okay, now we'll create the edge and to do that, I use two fingers and my knuckle or two fingers, you can use your finger or your thumb and we're just gonna go around and create a fluted edge i use my thumb on this one, I guess. Why? I have no idea. I usually do my knuckle, but today we're doing the thumb. <laughs> Maybe it's the way I'm standing, I don't know. Okay, so do this all the way around. Two fingers and thumb or knuckle. There we go. We've got our nice fat fluted edge. Then I just pull it back up a little bit on the lip so it's nice and up tall on the lip of the pie plate. And that is done. Now what you wanna do is freeze this pie crust because the butter is warm. And so if you put this warm butter pie crust into a warm oven, your crust is just going to melt and it's gonna to start to sag down. So what I like to do is wrap it in press and seal and then pop this in the freezer for at least 30 minutes. And it can be, as I mentioned earlier, two to three months. So you can make this way in advance. If you're already planning for spring holidays, 
Go ahead and make your pie crust. Put them in the freezer. I have like four in there stacked up like this. Just leave them in there. And then when you're ready to use it, I'll show you what to do. So this goes in the freezer now. All right, now it's time to bake the crust. I took it out of the freezer and we'll just unwrap it. And I have it here on a parchment lined baking sheet. As I mentioned earlier, I always bake pies on a parchment lined baking sheet because even if there is no filling in the pie, butter from the edges can leak over. So you always wanna bake it on something, otherwise that's gonna go into your oven. It's gonna be a real mess to clean up. <laughs> Because we are adding a cool custard filling, as with the coconut cream pie, a chocolate cream pie, this key lime pie, as you saw, we cooked the filling on the stove top and we don't need to bake it in the oven. And because of that, we have to bake the crust on its own separately. And that's called blind baking a crust. When you bake a crust with nothing in the center, it's blind baking. And the problem with blind baking is that it's very easy for the sides to slip in because there's no filling in there holding it up. And if you want a full tutorial on blind baking, an explanation of it, check out my video on blind baking. It walks you through full explanation of blind baking, some hacks for it, what is par baking, when to use it, when not to use it. So check that out if you want some more detail. But this is blind baking. And what I like to do, most people will use uh, either foil or parchment paper line the pie plate and then add either beans, rice, or sugar, something to weigh it down and fill it up to hold the pie crust in place. I don't like to use those methods. So instead, what I've come up with is, this is a disposable aluminum pie plate, which you can find at the grocery store, usually in a set of like three for a dollar or something. And they usually have this lip on them. So what I do is I fold it up, like a, so it has a flat edge there. And you can see I'm reusing this one. I've used it a lot. Anyway, you'll just press your aluminum disposable pie plate, pie plate <laughs> into the crust. It fits right in there real nicely. Press it in to make sure it's touching the bottom. And then we need to weigh it down in some way because if we don't weigh it down, there's an, the air underneath the pie crust will push up and this will the, the crust will bubble up and the edges will bubble in. So what we're gonna do is use this oven proof Pyrex bowl and put this upside down right here in the center. And this is gonna hold everything in place. If you don't have a bowl like this, you could put a couple of ramekins or another round dish that'll fit in this area. I actually use a pot one time too. If a pot fits in there, that works too. <laughs> All right, now this is going in the oven at 415 degrees. We like a nice hot oven and a nice cold crust because that's gonna, the hot oven's gonna kind of sear the crust in place and help it stay up and get nice and golden brown on the edges. So 415 degrees, we'll bake that for about 15 to 20 minutes and do check it at 15. Everyone's oven is a little bit different and then we'll take it out. Then I'll show you what to do next. Now while the crust is baking, we'll make up the whipped cream topping. For that, we'll need one cup heavy whipping cream. And I'm using my stand mixer, but you can certainly use electric beaters or hand beaters. Just give that a little whisk to get it nice and foamy. And then we'll add one quarter cup sugar. And you could use your sugar substitute here. And I know one quarter cup does sound like a lot of sugar for a whipped topping, but we are going to add sour cream to the topping. So you have this really nice sour flavor that goes with the tart, that goes with the creamy. Sounds a little unusual, but I promise it is delicious. So it's one quarter cup sugar or sugar substitute. Next, we'll add two teaspoons of vanilla. One. Too. Oh, smells so good. Yum. Then we'll beat this until firm. Now we're gonna add three quarters cup sour cream to the whipped cream and sugar and vanilla. 
And this actually is another way of stabilizing whipped cream. In the last video, I talked about stabilizing whipped cream with a little bit of vanilla pudding powder, instant vanilla pudding powder. But you can also stabilize whipped cream with something like uh, sour cream or creme fraiche. So that's what we're doing here. Just gonna add that in and fold it in real gently. And basically that means just don't you know, stir it real quick and break up all the air bubbles that we've created, just kind of fold it in there. Now having that sour cream in there, because it stabilizes the whipped cream, you can also do this ahead. So do this 24 hours in advance at most and store in the refrigerator in a covered container and that is ready to spread on the pie whenever you are. Mm. It's the best flavor. That sour cream with the sweetened whipped cream is just so incredible. It's this sour kind of tangy. Mm. There's the oven. I'll stop talking. Okay, this looks great. And maybe it seems obvious, but when you're holding a pie crust on a parchment lined baking sheet, you always want to hold it with two hands or two paws in this case. <laughs> because um, if you hold it with one hand, it can easily you can lose your balance and lose your whole pie. I've done that before. It was an apple pie and it was very sad. So hold it with two hands when you're going to and from the oven. So as you can see here, this looks great. We've got our nice golden crust that held its shape on the outside. It looks wonderful. Now we'll take out the centerpiece, but do remember that this is very, very, very hot. So do not just grab it with your bare hands. I'm gonna use a dish towel for that. So what we'll do is just very carefully grab a side of the aluminum, side of the aluminum, and gently pull up and set this aside. There we go. There we have our very, very nicely blind baked pie crust. Now you can see it is starting to bubble up there in the center. And so what we're gonna do to avoid those big bubbles is prick the bottom like this, and that will let the air escape. So we'll just go around and prick the bottom. A lot of people ask, when do you prick your pie crust? Because people know like, okay, you make a pie crust, you prick it. This is when you prick it. I do around the sides just a little bit too. This crust feels so tender and lovely. And you can see too around this side that we definitely had some butter drip down here. So I am glad that we did bake it on a parchment lined baking sheet. There's no mess to clean up. Now we'll put this back in the oven at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes more. Now we have the filling here at about room temperature. This is the one we cooked on the stove. We just let it cool to about room temp. And now we're gonna add one cup sour cream to that. All right, this looks great. Now you should taste it at this point. Mm. Wow, it's so good. It's so tart, but it has the best flavor. Mm. Now this can be refrigerated for a day or two, so another great make-ahead option. And then pull it out along with your topping and you're ready to assemble the pie. Oh, so gorgeous. Our crust is done. It looks wonderful. It smells wonderful. You've got this great golden edge, nice and golden in the center. It's not overcooked. It's a lovely color. It all stayed up on the edge just like we wanted it to. So this turned out great. I can't wait for you to try this method. Now we'll let this completely cool before we add the filling and the topping. If you add a filling to it now, it's just going to melt. So do not add the filling until the crust is completely cool. So again, another great thing to do ahead. You can cool it to room temp, then cover it in saran wrap and leave it out on your counter the day before. And then the next day it'll be cooled and ready to use. Now that the crust has completely cooled, we can assemble the pie. First, we'll add our luscious lime filling.
Now to add the whipped cream topping. Oh, look at this. So light and fluffy. We just pop that right on. Spread that around. I cannot wait for you to try this. It is so creamy and delicious. It's unlike any key lime pie you've ever had. I'm guessing. Mm. I like to show a little bit of the filling underneath so you can see what kind of pie you have. But we'll just spread that on top. Look at that. That looks beautiful. Oh my gosh. Now we'll want to refrigerate this for four hours to let it fully set. Real quick, I'll show you how to make a little topping for the top of the pie. You just cut a lime in half and then cut off a real thin piece. Oops, that one wasn't even. Do another one. Cut off a real thin piece, but maybe not so thin. Here, then we'll just cut a slit from the center to the bottom. And then you can just twist your little lime like this and set it right on top. Okay, the pie is done and isn't it gorgeous? I do wanna show you one thing that makes this pie so, so, so special to me. This is a frame of my mom's Joy of Cooking cookbook. This was the cover and it fell apart so all I could salvage was the cover, but written in the back was her key lime pie recipe. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's written right here in her handwriting. So I have her Joy of Cooking cookbook cover along with her recipe for key lime pie in this frame and it sits on my fireplace. So you can see this truly is a very special pie in my family and I'm excited for you to try it. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. It means so much to me and also to YouTube. Also leave me a comment, let me know where you're gonna try this recipe. I can't wait to hear how you like it. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming up with easy recipes just like this and I don't want you to miss any of them. For this recipe and more, head over to my website, mariesaba.com. There you can go and print out this recipe and all my recipes, put them in a notebook and make your very own Marie's Kitchen cookbook for free. My goal is to give you some really easy recipes that turn out great every time so you can build some confidence in the kitchen and feel really inspired to share good food with people that you love. From my kitchen to yours, thank you.